What's up, everybody? Uh, Tommy and Nate here, like always. So um, Nate and I were having a conversation with some people today, um, basically about how the disease of addiction does not judge. And, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, people talk about um, getting rid of the stigma of addiction all the time. And, you know, you think of drug addiction or alcoholism, a lot of people immediately in their mind, they go to, you know, the thoughts of a homeless person who's sleeping on a bench with a paper bag with a 40 in it or a scraggly you know, beard yeah scraggly beard um you know a, a junkie living under a bridge you know doing whatever but you know as nate and i know very well and a lot of you guys know this also that's not true at all you know um no we've both worked in this field for quite a while and i can tell you that i've seen professional athletes come through treatment doctors lawyers ceos presidents of companies Cops, um police officers nurses, uh, firefighters, you know, we, we could go on and on right. with the people that we've seen who struggle with drug and alcohol addiction. Um, so we just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Addiction doesn't discriminate, you know, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what background you come from, what race you are, what your religion is. Um, two parent home, one parent homes, uh, divorced parents, parents that are together. It doesn't matter, you know, like addiction touches everybody. And, a lot of times for most people it's something in their genetics you know like it, at least you're predisposed to it um and you know through a series of other events and factors and choices usually is when somebody can awaken that disease and, and progressively move it forward by experimenting with other substances but most people are born with it and they really have no control and they haven't found you know that some populations have more addiction than others it's really you know there might be a different um addictions according to you know some people's cultural norms at, at times but um anybody can be an addict like tommy said it's people with jobs it's people in your community it's mothers fathers brothers grandparents um it, it really it could be anybody you know and and that's the thing that it's important for people to remember because like tommy said a lot of people have this idea that all addicts are criminals <laughs> you know we all do terrible things and you know we may hurt some of the people we love sometimes but anybody can be an addict and you know the only way to measure it that we, we talk about this a lot is in broken relationships like how are your relationships doing you know not just do you live with somebody and not talk to them you know like oh well, i still live with my wife but we just don't speak you know that's that's a broken relationship right is it affecting the people you love the most um and then and also uh continued use despite negative consequences right so you've had three DUIs and you still don't think it's a problem or you know it's a problem but you continue to sneak drinks and uh, try to figure out a way to drink while you drive or you just don't care. Um, so those are the two ways we measure it. And again, like that doesn't have anything to do with what you look like, uh, you know, your sexual orientation, your gender, gender identity, any of that stuff. Um, it, it can hurt anybody, you know? Yep, I mean, like Nate said at first, it really doesn't matter like where you come from right. either. I mean, Nate and I both come from great families. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people who suffer with substance use disorder, alcoholism, it is genetic, but I can tell you that I'm the only person in my family that has ever had, at least that I know or that my parents know or my grandparents know that has had a drug or alcohol problem. Yep. And, you know, the first time I ever got high when I was 12 or 13 years old, I, you know, I was smoking weed with some of my friends and it was like, the first time I felt that feeling, it was like something just clicked in my brain. And that was all I ever wanted to do again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, I didn't have a traumatic childhood. I didn't, there wasn't anything like that that I was trying to block out necessarily, aside from some of my own feelings of, you know, low self-esteem or, you know, wh whatever it was at the time. But, you know, the first time I got high, like I said, something just, it was mm -hmm. like a switch was flipped in my brain and it just took over my life really quickly and it, it doesn't work that way for everybody you know it can also be developed over time with mm -hmm. continued use and you know you develop the physical addiction first and then you know everything else comes after that but yeah that was that was how it was for me i think it worked pretty similar with me yeah i mean the first time i took a uh, substance you know i remember that day very vividly but you know spe specifically for me my substance of choice was opiates I remember the first time I took an opiate, it was like a spiritual experience. Honestly, I thought that I had found my higher power, you know, the solution to all my problems, um, if you would, you know, because prior to taking opiates and other drugs, you know, I was always irritable, restless, and discontent, you know, which is the state of most people. You know, a lot of us had these issues. We had a lot of issues before we even picked up a drink or a drug. 
what is broken inside us was typically already broken to begin with. And usually that's like Tommy was talking about the negative beliefs we have about ourselves. Um, we work with a therapist fairly often. Her name is Margaret Coates. Uh, she's been in this industry for a long time. And many times, you know, she asks people what they're feeling. Um, and then she asks, you know, what negative belief does that say about you that you're telling yourself? You know, is it I am something wrong? I've done something wrong. I should have done something. I'm not good enough. So on and so forth. I mean, there's a whole list of reasons. And for many of us, those substances quiet those voices, at least in the beginning. <laughs> Um, and we don't realize that we're actually going to amplify them once the drugs wear off because they have a rebound effect, right? Um, you know, so some people are born with those things. Um, everybody has negative beliefs about themselves throughout their lives. You know, one thing that we know about trauma is, um, everybody has some form of trauma in their life, you know, and, and it depends on, you know, when the person is exposed and what their brain does with it. You know, one, one thing we've even learned is you start to form uh, responses to trauma, um, the day you're born. Uh, so you could even have a tough childbirth. And this is not to put make anybody's families feel bad. It's really, you know, you do the best with what you can with the information you have at the time and with the abilities you have. And I think the large majority of people in America and around the world do the very best they can to raise their children and give them every opportunity, you know. Um, but, you know, you, you start to develop responses to what your body and your brain receive as threats early on. Um, and whatever path that your brain chooses to go down as far as coping, whether it's escaping, you know, you got your fight or flight mechanisms, that is what the brain is predisposed to. So, you know, most people who are alcoholics or drug addicts, um, the brain is trying to escape these negative feelings. It's, it's, it's its own way of running, right? Um, and we start to use compulsively. We become obsessed with our substances because it becomes our solution. You know, and like we've said, we find this across all socioeconomic standings, all races, all religions. Um, at the end of the day, you peel back our skin and where we're from, we're all human beings. Um, and our chemistry is all very similar. So, you know, your body starts to form these responses even before you're aware that that's what you're doing. And, you know, like Tommy said, a lot of people are born predisposed to addiction. There may be some kind of chemical deficiency in the brain, whether it be dopamine or serotonin, you know, there, there, there's, a, there's a wide variety of things that it could be. Um, but then there's also people who are born with some negative beliefs, but they maybe don't have that addiction piece quite yet. You know, those are people that abuse. There's a difference between addiction and abuse, and that's what Tommy was talking about. And often people sometimes develop a physical dependency first, you know, uh, which is Meaning physically you will be sick if you do not have to have the substance in your body. Uh, but the real problem is, because there's many people that develop physical dependency on things like pain medication or whatever it may be for a very legitimate reason. Maybe they have cancer need it. or yeah. surgery, like they snap their leg in half, you know, you break your tibia, you know, um, and you're in the hospital for months and you got screws and everything. And, and those people don't have a problem generally coming off the physical dependency, right? Yeah. Well, addicts and alcoholics, it's the psychological dependency and the spiritual dependency and the mental dependency on it that really gets us. It, it grabs us and pulls us back in. It's the mental obsession up here is what gets us pulled back in and keeps us going back and doing the same thing over and over again, right? Which is insanity, expecting a different result. So those people maybe who aren't born with that predisposed mechanism, what happens is the pleasure center in your brain is broken. That's what I was talking about with the endorphins and the dopamine and so on and so forth, right? So if you keep beating the crap out of the pleasure center in your brain with outside drugs, right? Things that your body's not naturally producing, but it causes massive releases of, of chemicals up here. You keep doing that over and over again. Eventually, when you're sober, your body's not gonna be producing <laughs> those, those pleasure uh, responses that they would no it would normally produce or maybe it did previously. So you've essentially broken the pleasure center in your brain now. You know, and like, you know, like we were saying, like this happens, to, this can happen to anybody at any time. Um, and that's why we see a lot of people that are straddling the fence with abuse and addiction, right? Like people will come to us and say, well, I'm not homeless yet. Or, you know, like I, I, I just, I'm, I'm not physically dependent. I'm a binge drinker. Well, you keep hitting that button long enough, it's going to break. Um, so, I mean, that's something to keep in mind for everybody. You know, I mean, it, it you may not be the person who was born essentially, with an addiction, but it's, it's, you cross that line at some point. And once you cross that line and there's even varying levels to that, I mean, there's, there's, you know, they, they, what they classify it as in the DSM, I think it's four or five, now I can't remember five DSM five. 
um, which is just a fan, it's a book that explains mental health disorders is all that is. Um, there's mild, moderate, and severe substance use disorder. You know, and Tommy and I, before our very eyes, see people of all backgrounds, races, religions, yep. people with jobs, people without jobs, people with insurance, people with no insurance, people with a million dollars in the bank, people with negative $100 in the bank, cross those thresholds and continually progress and their disease you know, when they keep going forward and doing the same things that they've been doing. Yeah, yeah that was a good explanation. I don't know what more I could add to that. Um, but yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, we just want to talk about how the disease of addiction does not judge. It doesn't care who you are, where you come from, how much money you make, what, what your family was like. Mm -hmm. um, none of that stuff. We've seen people from all backgrounds, all religions, races, everything. Yeah. So, you know, we just want to keep putting information like this out there, trying to break the stigma of addiction right. and, you know, just continuing to let everybody know that if anyone out there is struggling or knows somebody that's struggling, wants somebody to talk to, um, that's what we're here for. So yeah, don't fool yourself. I mean, if you're breaking your relationships and if you're continuing to use this by negative consequences, no matter what's going on in your life, who you are, where you're from, where you look like, um, you could have a problem, you know, and don't be afraid to reach out. It only gets harder as time goes on to reach out, right, Tommy? I mean, Absolutely. This, 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 this disease is progressive. We have a disease that wants us dead, but it will settle for us drunk or high. Not just that. We, also, we That same disease will tell us that we don't have a disease, and it'll tell right. us that we're okay when we're not, when everyone around us can see that we're not okay. So, you know, it's insidious. It speaks That's to us word. in our own voice. Yeah, it's insidious. Yep. Insidious means it, it, it progresses gradually in a negative way. In a deceitful and negative way. So, guys, if you feel like you're struggling with this insidious disease we call addiction, substance use disorder, alcoholism, whatever it may be, reach out for help. It is a progressive disease, but your disease can be arrested. Tommy and I are sitting here. We were some of the worst drug addicts, alcoholics. We have been homeless. <laughs> We've had negative $100, probably more than negative $100, probably several thousand mm -hmm. dollars negative in our bank account at various times yep um reach out to us we're here to talk to you there's really nothing you're going to scare us with or surprise us with you know um anyway we're here we care we want you to know that if you feel like you're an addict don't be ashamed yep. come into the light it's okay it's out here you know we're out here too so all right guys that's it yep. unless Tom's got anything else nope that's it thank you guys for watching listening liking and sharing we appreciate you all yep Thank you.